A while back, we released a video of street interviews we did in Charleston, asking people how to get to heaven. And during our interviews, we met with two polite people of the Greek Orthodox faith and ended up having a very informative conversation with them. Now, we trimmed down the original interview with them to just the responses pertaining to the questions that we were asking involving heaven, but we always plan to uh, later release it in full. And this video is the rest of that unedited conversation we had with them. Now, like I said, these guys were very nice and polite to talk with us and give us permission to use this footage. So even though we disagree with how they believe, we are in no way trying to harm or cast shade in their direction. The purpose of this video is to simply inform you on what the Greek Orthodox believe. If I could ask you just some preliminary questions. Yeah. Uh, what religion are you? What denomination? Greek Orthodox. Greek Orthodox. What, what is the, what is that? So we're the original Christian church. We can trace ourselves all the way back to the time of the apostles. Okay. We're called Orthodox, which in Greek uh, means true believing because we believe literally the things that the apostles taught and we have been unwavering uh, for the past 2000 years. Okay. So um, past the gospels and all that, the uh, apostles wrote a book called the Didache, which is advice of the 12 disciples. We still keep that book. It's not part of our scripture, but it's part of um, maybe like an apocryphal or um, extra book that's good to read. We believe the Holy Spirit has continued to work throughout the years. And so we don't stop at scripture. Scripture is obviously very high for us, uh, but we don't stop there. We continue um, and the Holy Spirit speaks to the holy people of God. Um, and so we have many writings of what we call church fathers and saints. And, um, and so they continue even in our day and age, because, you know, when we're looking at things like, um, you know, uh, cloning and stem cell research, it's not in the Bible necessarily, but the fathers of the church who have the Holy Spirit uh, very strongly living in them can explain these things a little better to us. Okay, awesome. Let me ask you this, because I know that a lot of people claim to be the original church, um, Catholicism for one. What is the differ, difference between Greek Orthodox and, and Catholicism? So theologically, there are a number of um, differences, but I'll tell you why we claim to be the original okay. church. Uh, we were one church until the year 1054, where the Great Schism took place. And of course, uh, for a couple hundred years before that, things had started to split up a little bit. The Roman Catholic Church um, historically can claim to be part of that original church, but theologically they changed. And when you change theologically, you change the natures of God, and God can't change. And so that's why as Orthodox, we've never changed what God believes. So what we believed 2000 years ago when Christ taught it to his disciples, we still believe it today. In the Roman Catholic Church, they've changed and added dogma. For one thing, the infallibility of the Pope. We don't believe that the Pope is infallible. Uh, we believe that when Christ spoke to Peter and said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, he was actually talking to all the disciples who are his successors or who are the successors of Christ. And we, the clergy of the Orthodox Church, are the successors of the apostles through ordination. You might think ordination wasn't in the Bible, but it was. It's called in Greek, heretonia, which means the laying on of hands, and that's how you see it. Okay. There are a lot of things, and the Greek Orthodox Church, we understand the original language of the Greek that the New Testament was written in. Is that koine? Yeah, we, we pronounce it kine, but yeah, koine, <laughs> koine, Greek, and, um, and that's the language that we still read the Bible in. Okay. Um, in our so you don't use an English translation of, of the Bible? We, we do use English translation, okay. but it's seminary. We want to learn the original Greek okay. so that we can explain the English. Okay. Not everyone's going to learn Greek, and it's not necessary. Right. Uh, but it is so packed. Every word is packed. I remember when I was a kid, I would ask people uh, from my church, like, hey, what does this word mean? And they'd end up giving me like a dissertation. I'm like, no, no, I just wanted like one word answer. But the truth is you can't explain things. I mean, each word has so many meanings in it um i'll give you uh, an example like the word for eleison people are familiar with that like kiri eleison means lord have mercy yeah. so eleison means mercy but it's related to the word eleon which means oil and oil in those days was a sign of mercy because that's what it was like the main medicine try and eat eat food with no oil in it it's dry food right it'd be very uncomfortable but oil is a sign of god's mercy to us and so 
Um, that's just one I, example of like, so when you say Kyrie eleison in Greek, it has so much more meaning than just Lord have mercy. Right. So would phileo and agape be the same kind of situation with the word love? Yeah, there are, uh, of course, C.S. Lewis has his famous book, The Four, Four Loves. Loves. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are different kinds of loves that are used to mean different things. I have like uh, some of my priest friends, we say like, give my love to your family. They're very specific. Give my agape to your family uh, to show that like, it's my unconditional love. It's a kind of love that God has. And there are other kinds of love and the other kinds of love are not bad, but there are different kinds of love. So I kind of joke that love is not love. And um, you know, there are different kinds of love um, that are appropriate for different uh, things. So while we have to love everybody, there are different kinds of loves. We don't love everybody with eros, the erotic love. That would be inappropriate. Right. Okay, let me ask you just a couple more questions and then I'll be done. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? No, I'm not because uh, God is good and merciful, but he also says, as I see, I judge and my judgment is just. So am I going to go to heaven? I hope I am. I do everything I can on a daily basis. The Orthodox understanding of salvation is that I was saved by Jesus Christ. I'm currently being saved by him and I will be saved in the future. So it's not a one-time thing. Um, it's not a one-time decision by me because I change. I, I sin, but then I'm supposed to get up from my sin. It's the uh, nature of demons to fall and never get up. It's the nature of angels to never fall. It's the nature of humans to fall and then to get up again. So as long as I keep getting up, I can get to heaven. But as uh, actually, this is Holy Week in the Orthodox Church right now. And so uh, one of the themes for our services is behold, the bridegroom comes at midnight. So we don't know when Christ is coming. We always have to be prepared. We always have to be ready. If salvation was a one-time decision, then I'd be saved. I wouldn't have to do anything that it says in the gospel. But rather, um, faith is obedience to Jesus Christ. So I have to, like in Matthew 25, I have to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and all those things that he said. And if I'm not doing those things, I'm falling short. And will I be saved? The Lord says no at that time. He says, you will go to the left to where the goats are. So I have to constantly work towards my salvation. So I'll follow up question and then I'll let you guys go. Uh, I know a lot of Christian denominations, they say that justification is by faith alone. So just judging by what you said, that that's not true. That it's not just by faith alone that you must you must get up and you must persevere and you must overcome and all of those things. Am I correct in that assumption? So um, it, it's very complicated. And it's very simple at the same time. Um, do you have the book of James? Do you read the book of James? Yes. So James says in his universal epistle, faith without works is dead, right? So how do we put that in? Again, true faith means obedience to God. If we have faith in Jesus Christ, that means we do what he tells us. If we don't have faith in Jesus Christ, it's it, like our Lord said, not all who say Lord, Lord will be saved. So not just say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That's it. I'm going to heaven. It, I have to show that. I have to show the action. There's a synergy. And again, another Greek word, synergia, work together with Jesus Christ. If I'm not working with him, then um, I have to, uh, then I'm not really having faith. Then that's just I'm paying lip service. Thank you so much for the conversation. Do, do you have any other? Absolutely. Absolutely. I asked him all the questions. So. On salvation, that's fine. He's the priest. <laughs> On salvation, the Orthodox Church is the, the experience of salvation. It is the mystical ascetic life and sacraments of the Orthodox Church that, that bring salvation to us. It's, it's a process that each of us is, is going through. We're, we're constantly being saved by God, and, and in that we need the sacraments to bring us closer to Christ. We need the Holy Eucharist, we need the Holy Confession, we need Holy Unction. We need all of these sacraments in our lives in order for us to experience Christ and the grace of the Holy Spirit.